Hey guys, so we just got a little bit of update on our 902 transmission. A couple of items that we got from the junkyard. We got a new carrier that we've got to disassemble and clean up because pretty much how it looks like coming out of a junkyard is pretty dirty. I uh, did get three new bearing races for the inner gears. I did polish those up and check them. They all look great. So we'll be changing out our pitted ones. We have pretty much all of our bearings here and synchro pieces. Uh, down here is our new slider, which we just need to clean all the cosmoline off of it. And we also have our new dog teeth for the uh, first gear itself. So we're going to get started with assembling the input shaft and then dive into the pinion shaft and see if we can't get this entire transmission back together. So the first thing that I am going to do is assemble our gear sets. So that means I'm going to be putting in our anchor blocks and our energizer rings, replacing our old synchro rings with new synchro rings. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting my final traces of any oil out of this system. Even though it's been through the parts washer, the brake clean that I like to use, the evaporative cleaner, is kind of like my final assembly prep. So I'm just going to start by assembling my anchor blocks onto my gear. And you can see on the bottom one, this little anchor block sits in there. This one floats at the top. And then I'm just going to slide my two energizers. And what I just want to make sure is everything is kind of sitting in place like that. On these transmissions, the actual synchro rings on the early ones are the same ring, one through five. Doesn't matter which way it goes in, that way or that way. But what I want to do is just line it up and squeeze it into place. And you want to sit it down hard up against the dog teeth. It should actually collapse in a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of effort to install that. And it may want to pop up a little bit. So as I'm putting my circlip on, I'll tend to kind of hold it in place. When I install these, the circlips can go in either way. And typically what I do, if they've got some wear on one side, I will actually flip that over. This ones are in actually pretty good shape. So what I will normally do is this part locates in. So I kind of put it in and twist it. I want to try and engage that groove and that will help hold the synchro ring down while I install it and I'm kind of going to walk it around. These can be a little bit of a battle to get in. So if you have to fight it, don't worry, that's pretty normal. Okay, so I worked it around in one direction, used my little hammer just to tap it down the last part. And then once it's in, I want to make sure that my synchro band turns and there should be a fair amount of pressure on that. So that's first one done. I'm going to go ahead and do the next gear. Alright, so now I've got my synchros back onto the gears, it's time to assemble the input shaft. So I'm going to take these two parts on each one of these. These are the old bearings, we've got new ones, and these are our damaged uh, interior bearing surfaces. And we're going to take these out of the picture. We've got our new bearings, which are a slightly different design than the older ones, a little bit stronger, much stronger cage. So we can slide these in here. Just like so. Now, all of this is going to be assembled dry, and that's important when we're assembling the shaft. We don't want any oil on this surface at all. Now, once it gets into the transmission, these gears are going to be submerged in oil, so it's not going to be a problem. Oil is going to get everywhere. You just don't want to lubricate it as you're assembling it. So pretty simple, straightforward operation. It's going to be exactly the same as we disassembled. 
We're going to take our first fixed gear on this shaft, on the input shaft. And with any luck, everything should slide together fairly well except for the bearing. Sometimes you've got to get them straight on the shaft and then they'll slide down and we want to make sure it locates. Our thrust washer comes next. And then we're going to put our inner race that slides down, needle bearing, loose gear, and you just got to line that up. We want to make sure that spins freely. Our hub, these can be a little tight sometimes and may require a little work. So our hub here does need to be fairly tight to these splines. If it has any rotational movement, then either replace the hub or possibly hub and shaft at the same time. We're going to put our selector or slider on next. In a race, bearing, and then gear. followed by our thrust washer. Now the other thing that I want to do is you can see our gears are going from smallest, next biggest, next biggest, next biggest. If you flip these around you will find that the shaft won't align with the pinion shaft and you'll have to pull it apart and do it again. Okay so we're going to be installing a new front bearing here and if we unwrap this bearing we're going to see that it's going to be coming with a brass cage on it and also another outer ring. This is going to go in the front of the actual transmission case. If we look at our bearing, we can see this is our bearing cage. There's two sides to the cage. You have this side, which is the top part of the cage that has the little uh, peen over pieces here that holds the cage together. And on the other side, it's clean. So on these, you have to install them with this part of the cage facing towards the clutch disc. So when I put it on the input shaft, it's going to go like this with our solid part of the cage up against our beveled washer. Now this is going to be an interference fit, so I'm going to heat this bearing to make it easier to install. You can also, if you like, put it in the press and install it that way as well. It's on all the way down and it just sat down and I've got my cage facing my clutch disc. So now we're just ready for our new lock washer and our nut and tighten everything up. Okay, so our lock washer has a little tab located right here. And on our shaft, we've got the matching uh, tab. So we want to let this go down inside the bearing. So when I slide it over, I'm going to let that little tab locate and it's going to be a little bit of a fit going in there and now we can use our nut and bring it down. Now we're ready to torque this entire assembly together. After we've torqued it we're going to put it in our V-Box and check our run out on our input shaft. Okay so I got my dead gear that I use as a special tool and I'm just going to clamp this into the vise. So the tightening torque is a range, it's between 100 and 120 uh, newton meters, that's 72 to 86 foot-pounds, so I usually go right in the middle at 110, so I've set this at 80 foot-pounds. Then I've got my extra deep socket. I just want to make sure that everything rotates nice and smooth, which it does. Hit the brakes. Perfect. So now we're ready to set this into V-blocks. I'm not going to fold over my lock washer in case for any reason I need to pull the shaft apart. That's going to be the last thing I'm going to do. When we tighten the nut, often if everything isn't aligned perfectly, it can tweak this shaft slightly. 
we are looking for less than 0.1 of a millimeter in runout. The other thing important to do is use the front bearing. We don't want to set our V-box on this part or this part because these components here may or may not be concentric or concentrically ground and will give us a false uh, reading. So I'm just going to rotate and then look at my dial gauge. I've set it up with a zero. We've got some very small movement, less, way less than 0.1 of a millimeter. We're in like the 0 0.02. Now, if you did have more than 0.1 of a run out, Porsche says you can correct that by uh, bending the shaft. So if you have say 1.3 is your run out, you can correct that using the press. Generally though, it's not necessarily. So all I got left to do on our input shaft is I'm going to use a pair of channel locks and I'm going to fold up our lock tab and then our input shaft. We can set that off to the side and move on to the pinion shaft. Okay, so I've just folded that lock tab over. That completes our input shaft assembly. Moved on to the pinion shaft and I'm going to do the first, same thing as I did on the input shaft first is I'm going to go ahead and reset up our synchros on our second and third gear. Uh, our first gear we need to press the dog teeth off and replace the slider right here. We'll get to that in just a little bit but for right now I want to get my pinion shaft to a point where I can reassemble it. Okay, good. There's our two gears. As I said, I'm going to leave first gear alone. Go ahead, take my old synchros off and put them in my junk pile. Okay, before we start assembling our pinion shaft, we need to do our base pinion depth. Now, on the end of our pinion shaft, we've got two numbers. This number here, the 3060, that's going to be the matching number to match the crown wheel. And then this number here, we have minus 0 0.20. So this is the optimum running position that this pinion is designed to run against the crown wheel. So the shims that adjust our pinion depth are these shims. These are the four shims that we actually removed on disassembly. Uh, these set in between the first bearing and this large spacer. And what they do is they move the pinion. If our crown wheel's right here, they actually move the pinion in closer. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to measure how thick our shim pack we had to begin with. And then we'll go and do the calculations on what thickness it should be based on what the Porsche numbers give us. So I'm just going to measure this in a couple of places. Okay, so I'm getting 1.58 to, I think I saw 1.75 was one of the lowest numbers. 1.78, so I'm just going to round it at 1.58. So to calculate our pinion shaft shim pack, what we need to do is kind of plug in some of our numbers. So we have a blueprint value, which is 63.5 millimeters. We have our machine value on the front of our pinion shaft that was negative 0.20. So this is going to give us an optimal running of 
63.30 millimeters. Okay, so the next thing that I need to do is Porsche's given us a an approximate value of what the average measurement would be uh, to help us determine our shim pack thickness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take their approximation value, which is 64.7 millimeters. So we're going to go 64.7 millimeters minus 63. 0.30, this is going to give us an answer of 1.4 millimeters. Now normally I would just go ahead and use that shim pack number underneath in between my bearing and my gear set and this is going to push the pinion shaft in towards the crown wheel. But however now that our gasket sets coming for L-ring only have a 0.2 gasket, I want to try and preload that so I know that I can use the gaskets that I'm supplied as the gaskets from Porsche are getting in short demand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 1.40 number and I'm going to add 0.20 for the thickness of my gasket which is going to equal a shim pack size of 1.60 millimeters. So what I'm going to do first is just measure each individual shim that I have and record that number and then I can figure out what shims I can use to adjust our thickness. So right now I have three at around 0 0.419 to 416 and one at 0 0.3. So what I've done now is I've put together a shim pack that totals 1.6 millimeters. Uh, I have a selection of different pinion shims, all different sizes, so I just play around until I get the exact amount that I need to get the right number. So this is the shim pack I'm going to use and what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our pinion shaft, assemble it into the intermediate shaft and then set it up in the case and we're going to validate that before we completely assemble our entire uh, transmission and then have to pull it all apart again if we have to make a change. But this is the shim pack we're going to run with to use our 0.2 case gasket. We have our new pinion bearing. This is a front pinion bearing, comes with uh, outer sleeve, this part gets pressed into our transmission housing. On this one, this particular cage, right here, the same as on our input shaft, you can see one side of the cage is perfectly smooth, the other side has a brass ring that's been peened on. This brass peened ring needs to face the gear sets, so it's going to go on like that. And just like I did on the input shaft, I am going to heat this bearing so I can drop it on and then we'll set up with our shim pack and start assembling our pinion. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is my shim pack is going to go right there followed by my spacer ring. And then the same as the input shaft, we want to assemble all of these gears dry. Okay, our final spacer has gone on and the last thing that we need to put on here is our bearing house. But this is the old bearing, so I'm going to grab our new 
uh, main annular bearing and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to heat it up with my hot air gun, drop it on and then we're ready to assemble this into the intermediate plate and take some pinion shaft measurements. New annular bearing and it's a three piece bearing so we have this which we're going to put into the intermediate plate and then these are our inner pieces so I need to heat this up and that'll drop over there and then this one will come in on the back side when we assemble it all together. You normally press the second one in? Nope, I heat it. Oh, okay. So let's go and heat this on. Before I can measure my pinion depth and hopefully see if my shim pack calculation worked out, I need to assemble my annular bearings, which this is the pinion side. I've also got to put the input side into here, attach the plate, and torque it down. So we're going to go ahead and put this together now. We have our two bearings, we have our pinion bearing and our input shaft bearings. These are the bearings that actually hold the gear sets in place. Uh, these are also why they are usually the most expensive bearings that you have to replace. I'm going to heat the plate up to make it a little bit easier. It's quite cold in the shop today and then hopefully our bearing should just drop straight in very nicely. So I'm just going to use my hot air gun to do this and I'll probably sit the plate up so I don't get heat transfer into my metal table. Otherwise I will be heating for a very long time. So it's hot enough just to take a little bit of the coolness out of the plate. Nice. So our bearings sitting in there very nicely. Then to secure the bearings, we're just going to use our retaining plate. So the retaining plate is going to sit on that side and we want to make sure that it's on top of that bearing. If I push it, I've got a slight rock. We can see it rocks, so when I do bolt it down, it's going to put a lot of load on the top of this bearing as well as on our input shaft bearing, which is going to stop those outers from spinning. Okay, these are our lock tabs that we're going to place on our bolts. And these bolts are going to be torqued to 25 Newton meters or 18 foot pounds. Okay, so I've installed my bolts with my lock tabs and on these two I've kind of started them to bend up just because of where they lie. Now before I actually tighten them down, I'm going to take a screwdriver and I want to bend my lock tab down because I don't want this lock tab to turn as I am tightening. So all the bolts are just finger tight right now. And I'm just going to bend that down like that. Same with that one. This one, it doesn't really matter which one you bend, just as long as it's one of them. Just to keep it consistent. Now that I have my lock tabs kind of stabilized into place, and I'm not going to move around too much, I'm going to go ahead and torque everything down in just a quick crisscross pattern to 25 Newton meters. Okay, everything is torqued down, so our bearings are secured in the plate right now. So I'm going to just go ahead, use a pair of channel locks, see if we can just fold up that lock tab. Like that. What we're going to do next is we're going to install our pinion shaft onto this bearing here and assemble this into the case, then set up and measure our pinion depth using our VW385 tool and see if our calculations on the pinion shaft shim pack were correct. So before I slide my new pinion gear in, uh, I'm going to replace this shell and this shell. These are our input and pinion shaft bearings that we replaced on our gear sets. So these are held in here by a circlip. You can see I'm lifting it up right there and then it'll punch out this direction. There's also a circlip installed on each one of these racers so once we drive them back in that circlip will go down and seat then we'll put this circlip back on again. Okay so I've got that circlip unhooked and I'm just going to walk it out like that. So there's our outer circlip. 
You can see there's another circlip around the outside of this bearing, but I'm going to leave that on. I'm just going to tap this out from the differential side using a hammer. So I'm going to pop this one off as well while I'm here. So all I've got to do now is punch these two bearings out. Okay, so there's our front pinion bearing. Kind of normal wear and tear on that one. But since we've gone ahead and put a new roller cage on, all I've got to do is circlip pliers, pull uh, this circlip off, transfer it onto our other bearing, and tap it back in from the backside. Okay, there's our old bearing shell. Okay, there's our new circlip, or our old circlip transferred onto our new bearing, ready to install back into the case. There's our input one. You notice how it doesn't have a circlip on it, and that's because this one has a secondary circlip right here that holds it on the front. And we were able to just tap that out through the input shaft hole right here using a, a long punch. One thing you want to be careful of this is a bearing punch, it's designed for this. If you use a straight round punch, you want to be careful you don't mar up that surface down in here at all. Otherwise, you're going to have problems when you drive in the new race. Hitting this with some of our MPS cleaner because there is old oil trapped underneath the bearing races. I can smell it. Good stuff. We love MPS. So I have my two bearing housings, a pinion shaft and an input shaft. I've already put the circlip on the pinion. I'm just going to get them started and then I'm just going to tap them in one at a time with a punch and put the circlips back in. Feels good, seated nicely. All I gotta do is slide the circlip in, but I'm gonna push my input shaft one in first. Helps a little. Okay, it's the first one snapped in. And second one slapped in. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a small pick and just push these just to make sure they're seated into the grooves next. Okay, it feels good. And that one feels good. So when they're seated, you should be able to turn them and they should feel like they are expanded all the way out. And that's it. Okay, so this kind of wraps it up for this episode. We've got our input shaft all back together. We've got our pinion shaft all back together. We've got our bearings installed in our intermediate plate, as well as our bearings for our new input and pinion shaft uh, outer races installed into the case. On our next installment of this series, we are going to set up the differential. We've done some of it right now with the shims down in here, but I'm going to show you how to use the VW385 tool, how we go about setting it up. We're going to put the intermediate plate and the pinion shaft together uh, without the 
input shaft for right now just to do all of our measurements and then once we've got our pinion depth set we'll go ahead and then we'll reassemble all of the gear sets. So that wraps it up for this. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and catch you on the next one.